As the World Economic Forum in Davos enters its third day, financial leaders are searching for ways out of the current financial crisis. And now to the Middle East and aid to Gaza have also been discussed and caused a stir. The Turkish Prime Minister stormed off the stage after a debate with the Israeli President. World leaders discussed ways to help the economy out of the current economic downturn, which is also being felt at the forum itself. Our correspondent Kishida Azarfa reports now. Shaping the post-crisis world. That is the theme of this year's World Economic Forum in Davos. But as plenaries continue and the financial movers and shakers struggle to find a way out of this crisis, they're conveniently forgetting the fact that most of them are responsible for the way into it. Let's have a look. Peter Sutherland, chairman at one of the world's biggest investment banks, or more accurately, former investment banks. Goldman Sachs was one of the first crisis victims. Stephen Schwartzman, CEO of Blackstone Group. Business has ground to a halt as private equity firms can't borrow money now. Many of the target firms that they asset stripped are now worthless. Jacob Frankel, vice president of AIG. America's biggest insurance company failed to provide just that, and its bailout is costing billions. Timothy Flynn, chairman of KPMG, which along with three other main accountancy firms, approved the very financial schemes that have brought the global economy to its knees. Richard Haythorne Thwaite, MasterCard chairman, or one of the voices behind the spend now, pay later idea, which is now costing millions of people, well, millions. And yet, after playing a crucial role in a state of global finances, these CEOs are happy to spend thousands on a week-long stay at top hotels in Davos. Not only that, business at BB Heli, a company providing helicopter services to Davos, is still booming. The only change... Passengers are really trying to curb costs. So instead of paying 9,000 U.S. dollars for a flight, they're handling over a measly 5,800 and get a single-engine chopper rather than the usual twin. And in this light, taking a somewhat condescending tone with your partners is really not the way forward. Which is exactly what the Russian Prime Minister pointed out during his meeting with the Business Council. Don't try and ride roughshod over us and pretend you've got it all sorted out. If we want the world to change for the better, we need to be a little more self-critical. So far, humility is not all that evident from the CEOs in attendance. Davos old timers, however, do say some changes have taken place. The Hotel Belvedere has been the focal point of the economic forum for years. Used to dishing out caviar and cristal, this year they're serving more wine and local foods. Of course we are uh, serving also uh, exclusive wines. But company-wise, I would say uh, that that's quite a difference now because uh, they want to give uh, all signals to the world uh, so that they're breaking down the budget. Having said that, the most expensive wines in the world, like the 1971 Chateau Petrus, are steadily depleting in stock at the Belvedere. The wine is flowing, but the parties are winding up early. Previous years, they have been extremely sure about themselves. Uh, that, that changed a lot. So this year, they're not choosing to drown their sorrows in $2,000 bottle wines? Uh, I would hope, but I don't think they will do it. But even with the crisis, over 2,500 people descended on Davos. Public figures and CEOs alike, just like they do every year. Some things just never change. Although most in the media certainly wish that was not the case, the press pool covering Davos Economic Forum has to work at a water park and live wherever they can find a place, which for my colleague Daria means sharing with how many people exactly? Three other journalists and a family with two kids, although I consider myself lucky because some of our other colleagues live in a former psychiatric hospital. You might think that is cost-effective. It really isn't during this one week. Prices in Davos skyrocket, which is good for the local economy, sure, but globally, no change. Katrina Zarva, RT, Davos, Switzerland.